people. I hope I get everybody out here. So, what order will I do this on? Jack Rayner, because he's the best. Okay, come forward. Okay. Lucy Boynton. Mark McKenna, who played Heyman. And Fernia. And I'd also like to introduce our uh, one of our producers, Anthony Bregman, who you'll know from Sundance. Martina Nyland, another producer, and Julian. Julian, cut the movie. Okay, so it's impossible that this crowd does not have awesome questions. Please raise your hand high so we can see you, and I'm going to repeat the question. Yes, ma'am. Please sing a song for us. <laughs> <laughs> the riddle of the motto. There might be some treats to come. Another question. Yes, ma'am. The musical progression, how did you decide? How do you mean musical progression? How do you mean musical progression? <laughs> <laughs> you saw the characters develop phenomenally in the music with it. Okay, okay. That's a good question, actually, because that, that's the thing. You don't want them to become too good too quickly in the film because then it's Hollywood. But then if they're too shit for too long, you're bored. <laughs> So it's like, so the riddle of the model is that moment, I think, which was a well-judged song, which was like, it's kind of shit, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> and, and that showed promise, because I did want to make a film about it, not just an ordinary school band, but a, but a really good, a band that are going to be good. Um, and, and so you kind of have to sh sow those seeds. So I'm glad, I hope the progression did seem, you know, that I didn't sort of montage it like a South Park montage, and they're suddenly brilliant, or, you know, so. So yeah, you just sort of like make make good songs a bit shitter and make shit songs a bit better. <laughs> okay, more questions. Keep your hands up too. Yes, sir. Sin Street is so famous and iconic in Dublin and in Ireland. Did it just kind of when you got the original movie, you were seeing like, oh yeah, I gotta put it in Sing Street. I gotta call it that. Well, you're from Dublin, I presume. What part of Dublin? Black Rock, he's posh, he's a Southsider. <laughs> I know, yeah, 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 there's more Southsiders here. Well, I'm a Southsider as well. Uh, well, Anthony Bregman, I, I, we had finished doing Begin Again, and we were sitting having a coffee in Clooney, Cafe Clooney in New York. I was like, so what are you going to do next now? And I started just waffling about my school, because I went to Sing Street School. And, uh, and I started to sort of really pitch him a story, and he was started laughing, which is a good sign as a producer. Uh, <laughs> And I was like, okay, and, and, and then we, we sort of went, what if this, what if that, and what if, you know. And I was a posh schoolboy who went to a rough school, and my parents, my father, I don't know, I still, I must ask him, why did you do that to me? Why did you send me there? Uh, I think it was some sort of thing that, like, I don't know, that he sent the other lads and girls to posh schools, and they hadn't turned out so good, so we give this, we're not going to spend any more money on this loser. Um, but yeah, you're right, Sing Street is a very, very iconic school. Sing Street used to be a great school back in the 40s and 50s. It was a really sort of tough, no-nonsense Latin and old boy sort of stuff. But it had fallen in, like much of Ireland, into a state of sort of disrepair in the 1980s. And I think my dad maybe thought that it would still have that sort of 50s thing, but it didn't. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, so Sing Street, it seemed like a natural pun, S-Y-N-G, Sing, S-I-N-G, so. Someone in the back or the top? Uh, <laughs> yes, sir, wait, in the middle there. Yes, you. Uh, how did uh, the motto and the edge play a part of the like, I heard that you two played a role in your film. They were really helpful with it, actually. I mean, it seemed a bit crazy not to speak to those two guys if you're making a film about an Irish band, you know what I mean? Yeah. It seemed like, oh, those two guys, yeah, 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 we should probably have a, have a conversation with them. Myself and Anthony went and met them. They were very good to hang out with us and meet us, and we pitched them the story. And I remember um, Bono's advice, which was really helpful, which was like, I pitched him, I, I, everybody that I pitched this movie to, I pitched like this, I said. I pitched, you know the scene where he goes up to Lucy at the beginning, or like 15 minutes, is it 15 minutes in? And, he, and then he goes back and he says, we need to form a band. That was the way I pitched the, the thing, and, and Bono's advice was always good, was all, you know, make sure you put that scene 
like right up close at the top of the movie, which was because I had it later on in the film, and that was sort of a good piece of advice. But just generally, you know, they're the biggest band in the world. They've been there for thir for three decades. It's phenomenal, four decades. Um, it just seemed like a no-brainer to ask those guys advice about forming a band. I was in a school band, but you know, a band after school for a while. But you know, they were they were just very helpful in sort of telling us anecdotes and sharing ideas and listening to music and bouncing back ideas and stuff like that. Yes, in the front. Question is about the character, the brother character, and the importance of that. Well, do you want to answer that for Because you have brothers. Yeah. I have two older brothers. Uh, one actually has long hair and a beard, exactly like Jack. Jack was dressing up some in the movie. Um, and uh, yeah, no, my brother's a musician as well, and I'm so inspired by him, and he's always showing me music, and we're always sharing music, and yeah, I suppose it's, all, it's, it's such a relief to come to come home to him, you know, because he's he, I get on great with him, and we think this, we think alike, and. I learned so much from him. You know, I don't think I'd be here today if it wasn't for both of my brothers, you know? Um, but yeah, like, I mean, very similar characters in the movie, like, I, it's basically my life story anyway, like, so it's easy. <laughs> Someone in the back, yes, in the center in the back. technically a question, but thank you very much. <laughs> There's a question about three rows back from Thank you. Yeah. The question is whether there were influences from Irish music. Well, I mean, Thin Lizzy had whiskey in the jar which was like number one in the UK, uh, and that's an old traditional Irish air turned into a rock song. But I think that it's a really good question, actually. I mean, I think that there's, there was a line, what was the line that we had at the beginning of the movie once? Let me get this right, because I don't want to screw it up. Um, this is it. The, I was going to open the movie with this on a title card, and I was going to say, the 60s never really happened in Ireland. So the 80s will be the 60s. Do you know what I mean? So in America, the 60s was the, that decade where, where we said goodbye to some things in the past that we weren't so proud of. And in Ireland, that didn't happen in the 60s. It was weird, like in the 80s, that was our 60s and that was the time that we sort of rebelled against stuff that we felt was holding us back. And we looked to London and we looked to New York and we looked to our connections in Europe. and. We, I think there was a cultural, real, a real important shift, particularly in my brother's generation, the slightly older generation, and, and that we felt as kids coming up in the 80s, we were looking around and everybody was talking about London and everybody was talking about immigration, not just as, you know, not just as a 1950s thing when all of my father's contemporaries left Ireland because there were no jobs here, but more as sort of like you go to England to find out who you are, that you won't find out who you are if you stay in Ireland. And that was a very interesting cultural thing in the 80s, you know, you need to find out if you're straight or if you're gay or if you're this or you're that. You won't find that out in Ireland. And so, so in a sense, that's I think why we looked to so many English pop bands and we looked to fashion from America and we really, we really I think Ireland like embraced that so much. Like uh, it was a great decade to grow up in Ireland because you had this really fun mix of, of priests and of, but of cool kids coming back from London, you know, saying, oh, London is, you know, wait until you see it, it's unbelievable. They have, you know, Ray-Ban sunglasses and they dress correctly. You know, it, was, it was a brilliant decade, it really was. Okay, um, I know there are a lot of other questions. I wish we could answer them all, but we want to keep a little bit of time for the special, special treat, so special treat time. So yeah, so we're, 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 so we're gonna try and mic up um, Ferdy and Mark, I think. We're, we're just bear with us, okay? But it will be worth something. We did this with falling slowly, and look for that one. 